Great, for this second question, we have a particle P attached to a string or hanging on a string that is placed on a smooth plane. So that helps us see no friction. The natural length of the string is 0 0.8 meters. The modulus of elasticity is 36 newton. Of course, the plane is in inclined to an angle of alpha, and this is more about alpha. This is the mass of P. The initial velocity of P when it was projected down is root of 2 meters per second. Our work is to find the maximum extension of the string during the subsequent motion. So let's, let's say that P goes down an extra x meters from the point of projection, which is the natural length. But it goes down x meters. Let's call this position, position one, and let's call how far P goes, position two. So one way of looking at this is to consider the energy change between these two positions. And if there's no external force, which is clearly the case, there's no friction, then that's easy for us. We could also use the Newton's method that involves forces and acceleration to be a differential equation. Now let's start by calculating the change in kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy is half the mass root 2 squared. The final kinetic energy is zero. So we'll do the zero, which is the final one is the initial. So now let's look at the change in gravitational potential energy between the two points. Since the world is moving from a high potential to a low potential, the change in GP will be a negative change, a reduction. So we have Remember, x here is how far down the slope it goes, which is the maximum extension in the string. Finally, let's look at the change in elastic potential energy. Remember, the projection was done from where P was 0 0.8 meters from O. There was no stretch in the string, so there was no initial elastic potential energy stored. We have a final elastic potential energy stored when the string was stretched by x. That would mean the stretch due to x minus zero. So now there are no external forces acting on the system, and that means we can write. The implications are these. Now this is the quadratic in X. We just solve this using a quadratic formula and get the two values of X as. So we have x as 2 over 3 or negative 2 over 15. Remember, the particle is going down from this location all the way to how far down it goes. And you're measuring distance. So we're going to go with x being 2 thirds and not negative 2 over 15. This doesn't fit our context. So the maximum extension in the string is 2 over 3. Now, another way we could have solved this problem would have been to consider the forces that are acting on P whilst it moves from its point of projection to the maximum displacement position. Now, as you know, the forces that are acting down the plane 
with a component of the weight of P, which we are going to call mg sine alpha. There's no other force acting in the direction of motion. But then there's a force acting against the direction of motion, which is the tension and the strength. So we have So this equation, as we have it, says that the acceleration in the direction of motion or the net force in the direction of motion is equal to the weight, the component of the weight of P along the slope minus the tension in the string acting up. In this case, however, X is a variable that changes from zero where the particle was projected with the string being just 0 0.8 meters, no extension to a point to any point right after so x is just a variable that change from zero to the maximum value x look at what the maximum value would be. so we just note that now this displacement x is also part of the acceleration expression because the, the rate of change of that displacement with time would have been the velocity the second derivative of that same displacement is the acceleration. We've been given information about the velocity of this particle and we want to relate that with the displacement. So instead of working with A as dv dt, we would consider A to be that, v dv dx, so that we have a relationship between the given velocities that we have and the displacement that we are looking we are after so let's see great so now let's polish this up and have a nicer looking differential equation And at this point, you can integrate both sides and have Now, when the particle was projected with a speed of root of 2 meters per second, there was no displacement at that moment. So we can say And that would mean that So let's put that back into the general equation that we had 